You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. Bitcoin. Ether, Solana, Doge, and more. Cryptocurrencies and digital assets are taking the financial world by storm. This exploding market provides everything a savvy trader needs. Volatility, volume, and liquidity, provided you know how to find it. That's where we come in. Welcome to the Crypto Rundown. Each week, we'll break down the latest trading activity, trends, and developments throughout the world's leading crypto derivatives markets. If it's moving the crypto markets, then you'll find it on The Crypto Rundown. The Crypto Rundown is brought to you by Amber Data. If you're entering the digital asset class, you'll need access to granular on-chain and market data from multiple venues to power research, trading, risk management, and compliance. Amber Data delivers comprehensive data and insights into blockchain networks, crypto markets, and decentralized finance, empowering financial institutions to apply traditional finance methods to digital assets. Amber Data eliminates the infrastructure setup, integration challenges, and maintenance headaches to access digital asset data, reducing cost and time to market to enter the digital asset class. Learn more and download their digital asset data guide at www.amberdata.io. Now it's time to dive into the exploding world of crypto derivatives. It's time for the Crypto Rundown. All right, everybody. That music means we are back once again for the Crypto Rundown, the program here on the network, where we go a little bit above and beyond. We're not going to talk about our Teslas or our VIX or our SPY or any of that kind of fun stuff, listeners. Nope. Instead, we're going to keep going further afield, see what's going on in the Bitcoin and the ETH hills. We're going to talk about the volume, the volatility, the skew. All that fun stuff and a whole bunch more. My name, of course, Mark Longo from theoptionsinsider.com, as well as from the ever insightful, at least we tend to think so, Options Insider Radio Network. Reminding you here at the top of the show, if you do like what you hear, do throw some stars our way. We obviously have been doing this for quite some time, and we have quite a track record on the network. Crypto Rundown, a little bit newer show on the network. But the newer reviews clearly do carry weight with the algorithms out there at the end of the day. So if you do like what you hear, do keep rating and reviewing. It does help the folks continue to discover the content out there. And of course, if you want to go above and beyond, you want to join us, I don't know, on let's say some awesome pro Q&A sessions where you want to pick the brains of some of the best minds in the world of options and derivatives and also with a nice crypto bent. Yeah, there have been quite a few guests on that show who, shall we say, delve into the old crypto derivatives. You want to pick their brains as well, as well as listen to options oddities. We're always talking about a lot of different names, including Biddle. So that's a name I know a lot of you are interested in on this show. If you want access to all that goodness, there's only one place to go, listeners. Theoptionsinsider.com slash pro is the place to go to begin your journey to the dark side, listeners, as we keep on going and dive right on into the Bitcoin Breakdown. It's time to explore the latest trending activity, trends, and developments across the world's leading crypto market. It's time for the Bitcoin Breakdown. All right, everybody, welcome to the Bitcoin Breakdown portion of the show where we do just that. We break down all the action in the world's leading digital asset. Yes, 
We're talking about the big dog, which is Bitcoin, listeners. And coming into the start of the show, we had a nice rally on our hands. We were at about 28,518. On our last show, we were at about 28,048. So that puts us up nearly 500 handles, about 470 handles. And of course, since then, we've seen even more pop. We ran these right before the start of the show, towards the end of the option block. And now we're already seeing a nice little pop continuing back north of the 29,000 handle in Bitcoin. Now 21, 20, excuse me, 29,183 out there. So that's quite the rally. That's over 1,000 handles from where we were this time last week, including an aggressive pop intraday today. We were talking about that on the option block recently as well. These markets just kind of got the bit in their teeth about partway through the session this morning, and it seems like they are continuing it, and that appears to be the case out there in crypto right now as well. So from being up about close to 500 handles, now we're up over 1,000 on the week. Of course, that blows away our previous high for the week, which was 28,685. That came on Tuesday of last week, so now we're pretty much at the high. We were just kissing, listeners. 29,199 now, almost 29,200, so impressive levels out there. Threatening that 30,000 level. Can we hit it? Can we kiss it even today? We shall see out there, listeners. The low came right around 27, uh, 830 or so. So it came on Tuesday of last week. So intriguing stuff out there for Bitcoin. Got a little bit of a range. A lot of that coming just in the last half an hour or so. So uh, intriguing stuff to be had out there in Bitcoin land. We ran these right before showtime, listeners. But there wasn't a heck of a lot of evolution on the skew and vol fronts. I wonder if we react these a little bit later in the show, if you might see some of that starting to change uh, because we were at a 57 vol on our show last week. Now, in and of itself, that is not anything to sneeze at. You know, if you listen to our This Week in Futures option show here on the network listeners, which you should be if you're listening to this one. That's the only other program on the network, really, where we dive into crypto more at length. Obviously, on the pro side, we do. But on the main network, Twifo is the other program that really touches on crypto. And you'll notice there as well that all the other assets we talk about on that show, whether it's in the commodities, you know, the metals, the ags, the energy, or even equities or rates, most of them can't hold a candle to a 57 vol. Most of them are in the 20s to low 30s from a vol perspective. So with the exception maybe of Nat Gas and a few others I can think of off the top of my head that is threatening triple digits. There's not much that can threaten a 57, but for Bitcoin, that's actually kind of low. So that's interesting, and it's been hanging out at this 57 level for a while because we were 57 last week, and coming into the start of the show, it's at a 57 again. By the way, if you want to see these numbers for yourselves, you want to go check out the current vol, the skew, the term structure, the hot trades, what's going up out there, whether it's in Bitcoin, whether it's in ETH, whether it's on Deribit, or many of the other platforms out there, gvol.io or amberdata.io, A-M-B-E-R-D-A-T-A.io is the place to go to kick the tires and light the fires out there. There's a ton of data. We really do just scratch the surface of it here on the show. If you want to see it all for yourselves, amberdata.io, the place to go as we keep on rolling. Let's check out the skew. Let's see if there's been any evolution in the skew. A lot of outlets have been talking about crypto option skew lately, trying to make it sound like maybe it's a bigger deal than it is. And right now, it's not really showing us a heck of a lot, except for the fact that it's looking a little bit positive. And again, That shouldn't come as a surprise to anyone because we are rallying and we're popping again right now. On the show last week, we were at two and a half. So that means about talking about two and a half vol points premium to that 25 delta call range versus the 25 delta put. And again, if anything I just said was confusing to you, you have no idea what the hell I'm talking about. Make sure you're subscribed to the full network because then you can check out shows like Options Bootcamp and Options Playbook Radio. Those shows will really hold your hands and help explain these terms to you in a little bit more intelligible fashion. We don't really have time to do it here (laughs) on a show like this. That's what those shows are designed for. And so we're happy to see some people coming into the network, discovering the network, discovering the content, and then going back and listening to shows like Options Bootcamp Episode 1, which we recorded over a decade ago. (laughs) But you folks want to get in on the ground floor, you want to learn Options, Options Bootcamp 1, OPR 1, those are great places. For you to start. Back to the skew. Two and a half point premium last week, two and a quarter points this week. So, not a heck of a lot of evolution out there on the skew front. Again, slight bias 
to the calls. I wonder if I re-racked those right now, listeners. Let's see. Let's go right into Amber Data right now. Let's do some on-the-fly analysis and we can make it all work. By the way, if I do sound a little bit different, I am still coming at you from the Southern studio here. So I'll be back in the Chi town studio next week for the crypto rundown. So if it sounds a little bit different. We are throwing things together as we fly here. And you know what? A little bit more positive right now. I said it was about two and a quarter. It's now up to almost three, about 2.9. So not surprising we're seeing some of that skew start to get back in there again as we're seeing this very aggressive near-term pop. If we didn't see that call skew getting a little bit more bid, I would be a little bit surprised. So makes sense that that's pretty much what we're seeing out there today. Still nothing aggressive. You know if you're listening to this show for a while, in the early days of this show, the call skew was much more bid. And it was that was just the way Bitcoin options traded. The premium was to the calls. Everyone was hodling. That's all they wanted to do was get bullish by calls. No one wanted the puts. Of course, last year changed a lot of that. We saw the aggressive sell-off. Puts were bid for most of the year. Now we're starting to see the calls start to come back into dominance. But still, it's very small. So intriguing stuff. But this, this by no means shows an aggressive premium being bid in here to the call wing. We have to wait a little bit longer to see exactly what's going to bake in here. But not surprising, we're starting to see a little bit of volume. A little bit of juice sneak its way into the call wing here. Let's get out to the open interest. Let's see if anything intriguing out there. We talked last week about March rolling off the board, taking a ton, a metric ton of open interest with it. Quarterlies are always very significant expirations in the crypto option space, listeners. In Bitcoin, even more so in ETH. We'll get to that a little bit later. But we saw a lot of paper rolling off the board last week. Seems like Bitcoin options still struggling to put it back on. We have 210,000 contracts open on the call side right now on Deribit. That's actually still down. It's down about 1,000 from this time last week. So not seeing a ton of increase. Intriguing given the pop we have out there right now. Uh, The puts were at about 108,000. That's up 4,000. So puts up slightly, calls down slightly. Not a huge evolution on the OI front. Again, we're still hanging out pretty close to that 2 to 1 calls over puts level, which is historically where Bitcoin options have remained for quite some time. Uh, there usually is a bias in terms of just sheer volume of open interest in the calls. That doesn't mean everyone's buying calls. Of course, listen, a lot of people use the calls to overwrite, try to get some additional income, some additional premium out of owning spot Bitcoin. A lot of use cases for the calls, which is why they tend to outnumber the puts. Uh, but still intriguing stuff nonetheless. Let's get on out to the top positions. Let's see what's going on out there, listeners. That is lighting things up. What is open for size in Bitcoin options? Let's find out. Let's do a top five. Number five, listeners, we have the 35,000 strike. Again, a few weeks ago, that sounded pretty outlandish. 35,000? We really going to get there? Well, threatening that level, or at least threatening 30,000 today, north of 29,000. The 35,000 strike, that has 14,800 contracts open. That's up about 500 from this time last week, listeners. So again, not huge evolution, but it's growing. Uh, Number four, we have the 32,000 strike with 16,100 contracts open. So no joy for the 32,000s, which is interesting. That is obviously closer to the at the money than 35,000. Yet no joy for them this week. Again, it's kind of a quiet week from an OI swing perspective. Number three, we have the 30,000 strike, 17,000 contracts open. In fact, looks like we have a tie for three slash two. That's uh, the 30,000 strike coming in at 17,000. That's up about 100, so pretty much unched on the week. And then we also have the 40,000 strike, also with 17,000 contracts open. That's up about 600 this week. So both of them neck and neck for that number two slash three spot. Maybe some verticals happening out there. That's why those OI numbers are so similar. They are eerily similar, but interesting nonetheless. And then the number one size position in Bitcoin options, yet again this week, listeners, we have the 25,000 strike with nearly 20,000 contracts open, 19,500 this week. That's up about 1300 on the week. So new positioning on the 25,000 strike makes some sense given what we're seeing out there from a Bitcoin perspective. Let's keep on rolling out to the product I know a lot of you love out there these days. Uh, that is Bitto. Right before showtime, we were hanging out at about a 17. So that puts it up about a quarter of a point on the week. Now, of course... Our old friend Bitto popping aggressively along with the rest of the market. It's up to about 17 and a half. That puts it up about three quarters of a point now. So Bitto, 
getting some love out there today listening. You folks been slinging your biddle? I'm curious. I know a lot of you out there, that's your preferred vector, especially because when it comes to options liquidity that you can use in a securities account, it's really the only game in town. We had this question recently, I think it was on the option block, is Bitto the best choice for a lot of U.S.-based securities traders who have securities accounts, they want to trade options, they can't trade on Deribit because they're based in the U.S., and they want to keep things easy, they want to keep it in their securities account, is Bitto the best option? And for those people, I say, pun intended, the answer is probably yes. There really isn't anything else to compare it to. There are some other funds that launched after Bitto, Valkyrie, and a few others, but Bitto really stole all the thunder from them. It has a huge first mover advantage. ADV is still robust. It's close to 90,000 contracts a day. It's actually down slightly now. It's down to 89,000. That puts it down about 4,000 from this time last week. But still, you're not going to find many products in the options world outside of your big dogs, obviously, your SPXs and your SPIs and your VIXs that can average more than 90,000 contracts a day. That's a pretty rarefied error. So Bitto, from a liquidity perspective, is going to deliver. The other thing we found looking at Bitto is that tracking wise, it actually performs better than you might expect. And when it first launched, I, like a lot of people, expected it to get annihilated by negative roll yield, the same way we see a lot of products in the volatility space like VXX and others really suffer from that problem. The short answer to that is it's not really the way the Bitcoin futures trade. The term structure, very different. We see that carry trade out there. That's a different beast than what we're seeing out there in things like the VIX futures. So as a result, Bitto doesn't really get annihilated by that negative roll yield. It actually tracks fairly well. Uh, So that kind of surprised me. When I saw that the tracking was good and that the volume was not just holding up but was increasing, it kind of seemed like a no-brainer for a lot of our listeners who want to dip their toes in crypto derivatives but can't or won't use Deribit. Bitto seems like a great choice. Uh, Again, the ADV, 89,000 contracts. Let's see what's going up out there today. 45,000 contracts on the tape. Uh, today. Before we get out to the top 10 positions, let's just see what's active out there in Bitto today. Looks like it's the April 17 halves. These actually this week, expiring this week on the 14th, going up about 4,100 times. That's the big dog out there, followed by these 100 of the 18s, also expiring this week. Uh, so a lot of near-dated call paper. Again, we just popped half a point in the span of a few minutes, so makes sense folks would be trading a lot of near-dated calls. Let's go out to the top overall positions and see what you folks have on out there in Bitto land these days. Let's do a top 10 because everyone loves Bitto. They're slinging it like crazy. Uh, Number 10 out there, we have the April 9 puts. By the way, interesting. I like to look at the totality of the top 10 to see how it breaks down from a call versus put perspective. We do that in a lot of our different shows. And right now, for the first time in some time, we're seeing the top 10 in Bitto options is evenly split, five calls and five puts. So intriguing, read into that what you will. We haven't seen that in quite some time out there. It has been kind of call biased for the most part, just like we see on Deribit now, 50-50, calls versus puts. That's very interesting. On number 10, we have 14,200 of the April nine puts. These are actually the April's expiring at the end of the month. So intriguing. Uh, Number nine, we have 17,000 of the June five puts. Those looking even more distant in the rearview mirror this week. Number eight, we have 18,300 of the April 10 puts. Number seven, about 20,000 of the Jan 18 calls. Those are looking better today. <laughs> Number six, 20, almost 21,000 of the Jan 25s. Number five, 23,000 of the Jan 65s. That's still one of my favorite strikes out there in the top 10 listeners. That just smacks of old school crypto call trading. Number four, 25,000 of the June 8 puts. We've been keeping an eye on these for a while. We talked about these before. It did seem like once all the 10 puts went away a couple of months ago, we saw the 8 puts pile in there. Maybe those were the replacement. But now, of course, as we mentioned last week, the 10 puts are back and back for size. Spoiler alert for number one here. Number three, 26,000 of the Jan 30 calls. Number two, 27,000 of the Jan 15. And number one, yes, you know it. You love it. 91,000. Of the April 10 puts. We talked about these before. They went up in big chunks close to a month ago now out there. Seems like a lot of people were overriding those, I think, for levels around 25 cents. Do you like the 10 puts? Do you like them straight up selling? Would you rather buy them at that price? Would you rather maybe leg into them with a one by two type put spread, buying one, selling two of that strike so you could capture more of the downside movement back to the 10? Do you think we'll be threatening 10 again sometime soon? 
in Bido, perhaps even by the <laughs> by April expiration, which is uh, coming up in a, not that long now, listeners. We got only a couple of weeks left on these bad boys. Ninety-one thousand—that's a lot of paper. Intriguing stuff as we keep on rolling to explore the altcoin universe. It's time to move beyond Bitcoin and find out what's moving the rest of the crypto marketplace. It's time to boldly venture into the altcoin universe. All right, everybody, welcome to the altcoin universe, a portion of the show where we break down everything going on in the rest of the crypto markets, with the exception of right now. We can't really avoid Bitcoin (laughs) when we're talking about overall Top 10 out here from a market cap perspective, listeners. Uh, let's do number 10 here. We've got our old friend Solana. Let's see, actually about $7.8 billion worth of market cap here for number 10 listeners. Number 9, Polygon, $10 billion even from a market cap perspective. Number 8, our old friend Doge hanging out about 11, almost $11.5 billion. So Doge looking a little bit more robust this week. Number 7 is Cardano, $13.5 billion. Number 6, XRP, 25, almost $26 billion. Number 5, USD Coin, $32.5 billion. Number 4, it's BNB. $49.2 billion. Number three, it's Tether. Of course it is. 80, about 80 and a quarter billion. Number two, it's ETH. $222.6 billion. Let's say it's a little bit north of a half there. And the number one big dog out there, of course, Bitcoin. $145.5 billion. We talked about the pop out there in Bitcoin, listeners. Well, ETH, not one to be left behind. When we ran these right before showtime, we had... ETH up about exactly 70 handles. It was 1796 on our last show. Right before the start of the show, it was 1866. If I re-racked them right now, we're back up to about 1896, listeners. So we've gained another 30 handles. So we're up exactly 100 points. We were at 1796 last week, 1896 this week. So up exactly 100 points from where we were this time last week out here. So a nice little pop here for all things ETH, but still. Even with that, listeners, it's not enough to eclipse the high we set in the middle of last week. We were at a 1922 and about a half. So that's an impressive run for ETH. And the low came actually during our show last week of right around 1796 or so. So on the downside, not that far into the 1700 levels. On the upside, a little bit north of 1900. We'll see if we can threaten that maybe even by the end of the show. <laughs> We'll keep an eye on all that fun list. Let's get on out now to the vol. And again, if you're looking for this over there on Amber Data, switch out of the Bitcoin there at the top of the screen and just click on over to ETH to follow along if you're playing the home game. And vol-wise, coming into the start of the show, wasn't a heck of a lot going on. Very similar to what we saw there in Bitcoin. In fact, it was a weird week where the vol was almost literally unchanged. We very rarely see that. In ETH, ETH is usually structurally more volatile than Bitcoin. That's the first thing we've noticed over the last couple of weeks is that gap, that spread between Bitcoin and ETH vol has come in quite a bit. It's only a couple of points now. 59 and a quarter on our show last week for ETH vol. 59 and a quarter again this week. So ETH vol literally unched on the week. Listen, let's see if I re-rack it now. This little bit of a rally we're seeing out here. If we've seen any evolution in the vol as a result. Bear in mind, listeners, I am coming at you from the Southern studio, so a little bit slower. Not as many screens to work with down here, listeners. 60 and about a quarter. So we have seen that vol pop about exactly a point right now. So again, I'd be surprised if we didn't see a little bit of movement out there. And we got about a point out there. Skew-wise, it was eerily... Similar on the skew front out there. About negative about two-thirds of a point last week. About negative two-thirds of a point uh, this week as well. In fact, we've seen some outlets starting to pick up on this coin desk. Ran a big piece about, oh, the put skew has a bearish bias (laughs) to it. It's modest. Anyone's reading a lot into a negative (laughs) negative two-thirds of a point, uh, then it's obviously a quiet time in the markets out there. Not a heck of a lot to really indicate that there's... We've seen, obviously... ETH skew get much more put biased in the past. So this, I would consider this effectively flat. Uh, they tried to say on Coindesk, this shows concerns about stakers might rush to liquidate their tokens following the Shanghai update on Ethereum on Wednesday. I, I think that's reading a lot into a very modest skew. <laughs> but hey, 
<laughs> sometimes I get it. Sometimes you got to keep the lights on. You got to keep churning out content when there isn't a heck of a lot going on out there. But yeah, I'd be very cautious, listeners, on reading that much into a very, very modest skew out there. That said, let's see if we're seeing any evolution on the skew front. And you know what? We're seeing it slightly more negative. It was about negative two-thirds of a point, about negative 1.2 points. Now, that's a little bit intriguing given the movement we're seeing out there. Then again, hard to really read much into any of that kind of modest level of movement out there from a skew perspective. Let's get out to the OI, see what's open out there. And I said before, crypto loves a quarterly. ETH is on another level in terms of the quarterly expirations. If you're looking at the OI and where it lines up in ETH options, listeners, it's going to be really just your quarterlies, your March, June, your September, and your December. They dominate the open interest all the time. It's just the way ETH options like to trade. It has been for some time. It doesn't really show any signs of slowing. So when March went away, it took a lot, a lot of paper with it. And ETH, to its credit, is starting to put some more back on the tape. In fact, the call-wise, we have 1.76 million calls open on Deribit right now. That's up about 110,000 this time last week. So starting to get a little bit of action. The puts can't really gain much traction. 778,000 open. That's up a little over 3,000 on the week. So not a heck of a lot going on there. Uh, still hanging out over 2 to 1 calls over puts. We've seen it get much higher than that. So 2 to 1. Not exactly out of place for calls versus puts on the ETH OI front. Let's go out to the top five to see if we had any shakeups out there. I'm going to guess the answer. Probably not a huge evolution, but you never know. You never know what we got going on this week. Let's see. Number five, we have the 2200 strike. That has 156,500 contracts open. It's up nearly 15,000 this week, about 14,800. So that's a pretty big move for the 2200 strike. Let's see. Number four, we have the 1600 strike with 208,000 contracts open. That's down 26,000. So you know what? A little bit of evolution out here on the top five this week. That's always interesting to see. Number three, the 1900 strike. That's down 4,000 contracts in this time last week. Number two, the 2000 strike. 211,000 contracts open. That's down a whopping 13,000 from this time last week. And number one, we have the 1800 strike. 255,000 contracts open. That's up about 5,000 from this time last week. So a little bit of evolution out there on the ETH OI front, which is always fascinating to see. Let's keep rolling now throughout the rest of the altcoin universe. And then we'll take some of your questions here. Let's go out to Solana. And again, weird week. 20.3 at the end of our show last week. 20.3 <laughs> when we kicked off the show again this week. So. Literally unched on the week. If we re-rack it here before the end of the show, let's see what we've got going on out here in Solana. Solana actually about a 2060 as we end the show. So a little bit of a pop, but nothing crazy. XRP hanging out 50 and a half cents last week. 50 and a half when we kicked off the show today as well. So again, XRP, hard to sink our teeth too much into that. Everyone's still waiting for the outcome of all that madness. Dogecoin, like I said, looking a little bit more robust this week than last, 7.7 cents last week, 8.3 cents this week. I know a lot of you, drives you crazy to hear Doge mentioned in the top 10, but that's where we are, listeners. Uh, Litecoin, not a huge evolution on the week, 91.86 last week, 92.60 this week, up about a whopping 74 cents on the week. Go out to Cardano, it was 38.2 cents last week, 38.8 cents this week, so not a huge evolution out there. Uh, Polkadot, 635 last week, 670 this week. So actually uh, giving up a little bit on the week. And then everyone's favorite, Shiba. Looks like, once again, listeners, Shiba Lambo watch. <laughs> uh, no joy out there. Shiba looking pretty much unched as we keep on rolling. Take some of your crypto questions. You've got questions about crypto. Who doesn't? It's time to find out the answers to your crypto questions. All right, everybody, welcome to the Crypto Questions, a portion of the show where you folks take the reins, your questions, your comments, your insights, your pearls of wisdom. You let us know what's on your brain out there in the crypto front. This week's question comes from BTD. BTD wants to know, why aren't we seeing more volume on the CME crypto derivatives post FTX? Thank you very much. Well, now, there's a lot to read into that question. I'm assuming, by the way, you worded your question there, 
you're kind of assuming that the FTX debacle is going to drive a lot of people into the listed products on CME. And, you know, it does seem like there, that is certainly an understandable school of mind and understandable philosophy out there. A lot of people, it seems like that FTX event really split people in the crypto space. Some of them said, hey, you know, we need to run towards centrally cleared. That is the answer that would have saved us from all of this skullduggery with FTX. Others said, hey, DeFi is the answer. It was centralization over there at FTX that caused a lot of this problem. DeFi would have made that impossible. And we need to go more on the DeFi front. So it does seem like there is a little bit of schism going on in the crypto space right now over that. So I can see why you might assume that the options over there on CME would be doing more paper. By the way, if you want to see what's going on on the CME crypto derivatives listeners, we have that set up for you for free as well because we like you folks. If you go to cmegroup.com, then go to slash TWIFO, T-W-I-F-O. That is the name of the show we do with CME every week on the network on Thursdays. That stands for This Week in Futures Options. So you go to cmegroup.com slash TWIFO, and you'll see a pop-up there for your free This Week in Futures Options report. And once you do that, you go into that asset class drop-down. You, you can choose anything that trades on CME. We added a special section for crypto just because we like you folks. So go into cryptocurrencies, go into index. And let's select Bitcoin right now just to see how it's doing. Remember, the big Bitcoin options on CME, that's a beefy product. That's a 5x multiple. Obviously, with the rally in Bitcoin, that's getting more expensive, not less. <laughs> so a 5x Bitcoin contract, it struggled to gain some traction. Uh, I used to joke on this product, sometimes it would do two contracts. That said, in the last couple of weeks, we have seen some over 1,000 contracts days. In fact, last, or weeks, I should say. In fact, last week, it was 1,100 contracts on the tape in the big Bitcoin 5X contract. So your question is maybe a little bit leading BTD because the, actually we are seeing a little bit more volume out there, which has kind of surprised me uh, given how much action there is in the big Bitcoin contract. Let's, let's go to the smaller stuff now, the micro Bitcoin, which they've also launched uh, specifically for you folks, the retail crypto traders out there, you want to dip your toes in micro Bitcoin. And you know what? These have kind of struggled. So this might be where I could kind of agree with you, BTD. These were designed for the retail when Bitcoin was too expensive, 60000 for one Bitcoin, let alone a 5X contract. That was just way too expensive for the average retail. So they created these micros to make them more bite-sized for you. And they never really took for a variety of reasons. I heard a lot of complaints about the margin. That seems to be complaint number one. These are just heavily margin products. That takes a lot of the value out of it for a lot of the retail out there. But that said, these are looking a little bit better this week as well. Uh, Last week, the micro Bitcoin didn't do a heck of a lot. Only about uh, 300 contracts going up all week. Remember, this is a micro-sized contract. This is small stuff. This week, 2,500 so far. So already in one day, (laughs) doing 8x what it did all of last week. So today's pop may be changing things a little bit out there. Let's go to ETH and and do the same thing. Let's go back to that TWIFO report, listeners. And instead of choosing Bitcoin this time, we're going to choose Ether. And let's see what's going on out there. These are newer additions. Remember, the the big Ether contract also kind of a ridiculous multiplier out there. I think it's 50, something along those lines. So that one has really not caught on. Only one contract has traded so far this week. Last week, a better week, though, about 250. Again, that's a beefy, beefy contract. On the micro side, the micro ether has had more success, it seems like. Uh, we had weeks, and that was doing thousands of contracts. And last week, it did about 1,000 again. Well, let's see what's on the docket for this week. About 250 so far today. So kind of light. It, it seems like that one ebbs and flows. You've seen it do thousands, tens of thousands of contracts some weeks on the micro ether side, and then other weeks, a couple of hundred. It really, really strange, the ebbs and flows in the volume on that one, quite frankly. Uh, So I was surprised when the micros launched, they didn't really resonate more. So maybe I can agree with you on that perspective there, a BTD. I do, if I had to guess, I would probably say it is the, the margin that's holding these back. CME, when they first launched them, they got very restricted with the margin 2017 when they launched these uh, cftc was not exactly thrilled about the notion of listed derivatives on crypto so in order to make things a little bit more palatable they went with a pretty pretty onerous margin regime (laughs) 
and maybe that's coming back to bite them now on the volume front. I think also for a lot of crypto people, it's just the notion of trading on an exchange is anathema to them. They just will never, never wrap their heads around it. So there's a little bit of that push and pull as well. But it's an interesting question. I think the margin is probably, if I had to point my finger at anything, BTD, that would probably be it. But that said, it's an, it's an area of the space to keep an eye on. Uh, we used to talk about them on the show. We kind of rolled them off just because there wasn't a lot of volume there. But if we get questions like this, BTD, we're always happy to sink our teeth into crypto. And again, we do touch on it on our TWIFO show every now and then as well. So make sure you tune in into that on Thursdays or wherever you get the rest of our network content. All right, that's going to do it for us this week on the Crypto Rundown. I want to thank you for joining me from the Southern Studio. I'll be back in the Shy Town Studios this time next week. So uh, all sorts of fun should be had there. Stay tuned for the rest of our usual allotment of content coming at you on the on-demand side this week. Back again in the studio in Chicago on Thursday, listeners, for our live This Week in Futures Options and Option Block shows. Friday, Vol Views and Options Oddities coming back at you live on the network. All the way back to next Monday, another episode of the Crypto Rundown. Stay safe out there. The Crypto Rundown is brought to you by Amber Data. If you're entering the digital asset class, you'll need access to granular on-chain and market data from multiple venues to power research, trading, risk management, and compliance. Amber Data delivers comprehensive data and insights into blockchain networks, crypto markets, and decentralized finance, empowering financial institutions to apply traditional finance methods to digital assets. Amber Data eliminates the infrastructure setup, integration challenges, and maintenance headaches to access digital asset data, reducing cost and time to market to enter the digital asset class. Learn more and download their digital asset data guide at www.amberdata.io. You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available in the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com.